Okay, so a lot of times we've seen that when we introduce concepts like embeddings, vectors, vector databases, folks do uh, normally get confused because they're not able to understand the differences between an embedding, a vector, and a vector database. So that's where I thought it should be good if I give you a breakdown, an actual breakdown of uh, the embeddings, the vector databases, and how they are actually interrelated uh, to each other. I think, I think the best way to understand is uh, that we actually always start with the real uh, data, right? So when you, when you say real world data, the real world data is in, in the form of text, images, um, it could be a video, it could be a sound. So this is your real world data. Now, as we studied in embeddings, embedding was nothing but a process that transforms the real world data into numerical numbers or vectors. Right. And, and these embeddings capture the important features of the data. Right. So we, we talked about the cat kitten uh, example. Right. So what you're doing is you're taking the real world data. You are using embedding to create numerical vectors. Right. Now embedding is taking multiple vectors. Right. Now these vectors, they represent your data features. So vectors are nothing but the numerical representation of the data, which is created by the embedding process, right? So as we saw again, the example of cat, where, whether it is feline, whether it is uh, related to um, say uh, the, which, which category uh, it belongs to, the male, female, right? So vectors are nothing but the numerical representation of the data, which is created by embedding process and each vector is a list of numbers. So it's always an array of numbers. So it would be an array of numbers like this, right? So each vector is a list of numbers that encodes the data's characteristics. And all you are getting is, uh, you might remember from 7D to 2D, we were able to get it. And all we were getting is, we were getting the features of that object, right? Now, once you have got the vectors, you would have to store the vector somewhere, right? So normally, if I give you, uh, ask you today, where would you store your Oracle tables? You would all, uh, or your normal tables, right? You would be storing your tables in a database. Same way you would be storing your vectors in a vector database. So a vector database is a special kind of database, which is designed to store and eff eff efficiently retrieve large collection of vectors. And it uses techniques to find the similar vectors quickly, right? So as, as we studied earlier, it is more of about similarity search. So you're doing a similarity search. A man is to a woman, uh, a king is to a queen, right? So you're doing something like a similarity search or a cat and a kitten, they are, they are related, right? Or I talk to you, uh, talk to you about uh, the fruits examples. So if, you, if you're looking to give them uh, the vector representation, where would it, uh, where would an apple come? It will come in the category of fruits. So a vector database is storing and retrieving the vectors, right? It's pretty simple, right? Real world data, you are using embedding, you are creating numerical vectors. Now these multiple vectors are, then you are using these vectors, which are actually representing the features of the data. And you are storing these vectors in a database, which is called a vector database. And then obviously, here comes the application part, like this is all happening at the back end. Obviously, you will have some kind of a front end. So your front end would be your application. So vector databases are used in various applications, such as similarity search, where we are finding similar data points. Again, I always tell example of Netflix, where you are using Netflix, where it is using the recommender system and uh, various other recommendation systems as well, right? So um, I think uh, with this, you've got a very good understanding of a relationship between embeddings vectors, vector databases.